What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matthew Kaufman. If uh, you're new, consider subscribing, give it a like. Uh, today I wanna actually, it's gonna be a little different cause this is gonna be more like a vlog style video. It's probably gonna be a quick one. <clears throat> so, it's pretty funny in, funny in a way, <laughs> what I found in the, uh, in the basement. A couple, I wanna say like three weeks ago, one of the uh, units for one of my tenants, their heater went out. So I had the HVAC guy come in, he did his thing. You had to come back like, like three, four times to like finish the job. And uh, like three, four days ago, the water uh, heating system went out all of a sudden. I don't know why, I thought it was the pilot light. And I was there for two hours myself before I actually called the guy to actually come fix the issue. And when he was finishing the uh, job, he found something relating to the chimney that was actually kind of hilarious, but we found something in the chimney that should not have been in the chimney. Bruh. So I want to show you that. <laughs> I want to show you uh, what we found and uh, we're going to go take a look, all right? So keep on watching and here we go. Let's find out. I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to go actually I need the keys. Side, I'm gonna play around with these to try to find the right key to get in. Just bear with me for a sec. Here it is. All right, let's go. Here's the basement. All right, so like I was saying, originally, turn the light on first. So originally this unit went out and had, an, any, had no idea what it was. I managed to find out that we had to drain the system because the entire system was just flooded with water. And so HVAC got, came the first time, this is like, probably the coldest day of the year and it was like 10 o'clock at night I'm, I'm just lucky the guy actually came because I was shocked that he did when he did and we spent like two hours down here just bucket after bucket after bucket just like unloading the entire system of water because the tennis radiators were leaking water initially and we had no idea why eventually to find out that the entire system was just backed up and flooding pretty much so we came in did his thing he had to come back like two or three more times and eventually he came back most recently because something else went wrong <laughs> and that would be this unit. The system just stopped working. This is to uh, heat the water for the, for the unit, obviously, you know, for the shower, for the sink, everything else. And we were looking at this, by the way, this is a ream unit. Hopefully you can see that. Hopefully it's not too dark down here. And I was playing with this. I took the entire cover off right here, if hopefully you could see it. And I was kind of playing with it, what, what, kind of wondering whether it was the, the pilot light, whether it was, you know, the entire machine, it was just out and broken and gone. And I needed to buy another one, which I was hoping it wasn't because that would have obviously caused it a nice little chunk of change. And so he came, he took a look at it. And literally what he did was set us to low. All of a sudden you hear, and the pilot light just went back on. Problem fixed. And the entire time, like looking at YouTube videos, everything like relating to this type of uh, machine specifically, like this, the brand, you know, the exact model, and for some reason just was not working. And so he fixed it luckily. Then, what actually, the reason I'm making this video, the reason I wanna show y'all is he, Unfortunately, I can't technically show you it because he kind of already like fixed the issue. But what he did, if you could see right here, hopefully get in there a little bit. 
So this piece right here, if you look where that pipe connects to the actual chimney, behind that, what is now new uh, kind of dried cement, is what he found was dryer lint. So here are the machines. <laughs> you know the type of lint that you pull out of this? Yeah, right there. That kind. <laughs> that kind of lint. I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna empty that out when I'm done making this, but because that's a fire hazard. Speaking of fire hazards, underneath what is that new cement was it? dryer lint stuffed around to supposedly fill the hole and fill the gap and then they put cement over that that is the biggest fire hazard i could ever imagine and the fact that this house hasn't had a f for, for one thing a fire to begin with or just the entire house is burned to the ground because of this i'm feeling pretty blessed right now that it didn't <laughs> and i'm really happy obviously that the contractor the, the guy the hvac guy that came in to fix the issue realized that and he was experienced enough to know you know, this is a problem, we should probably fix this. And as you can once again see, hopefully you can see it, it's not too dark in here hopefully, but he began the job and what me and my dad are actually gonna do is finish it because the product that you need, it's very simple. You just go down to like Home Depot or like any hardware store and get it and what the product is. I can't remember off the top of my head, I have it written down. It's a high temperature furnace cement and it's nothing difficult, but it's definitely something, it's definitely a necessity just in case because you don't like smoke or anything or gas or anything leading out of the uh, actual chimney of course so that was a headache that led to another headache that led to what could have been a huge headache <laughs> and the after everything the HVAC guy actually gave me like a pretty good deal on price uh, it's funny because he came initially for the first heating unit probably late it was like around christmas time it might have been like before christmas and periodically he was coming back and back and back and i was trying to pay the guy <laughs> the entire time because i'm the type of person like if i have a bill especially a big bill i want it paid for as quick as possible to just to get off my head and get it out of my head and so finally after him coming this last time he finally gave me the invoice finally gave me the final price in total it came out to i think it was 807 dollars and honestly like after four visits, once again with labor and everything else, that's honestly a pretty good deal. And I'm just glad that the guy was experienced enough to know what he was doing. Obviously, he's clearly a very experienced person. And if, and if anybody is interested in him, if you live in Connecticut, that's where I live. That's where this house is in Connecticut. Comment below and I'll send you a message like with his uh, contact information because he's very experienced, good guy, easy to get along with, and clearly price-wise, very reasonable. So, that's kind of that, and I think most people will look at this as a major issue. Like, when anything goes wrong, they're going to get upset, they're going to get worried, they're going to think, oh, I'm going to go broke, I'm going to have to sell the house, I'm going to have to do something. Just very drastic. <clears throat> at first, I was like that. <laughs> and the way I view it is, once again, I bought this house about nine, ten months ago now, and for all the issues that I would imagine would have come about, have not, and I'm very grateful for that. This is honestly the first large expense that I've had, and once again, it's, a little, like I said, a little over $800. That's not that bad. For everything that could go wrong with the house, for the fact that I have two tenants living here, for the fact that there's all these different pieces of machinery that clearly could go wrong, some things will need replacing. I'm already planning on replacing the roof probably in the spring, and that's going to run me probably, I've already got some quotes on it, and it's probably going to be anywhere between like 8000 on the very low end. No way it's going to be that cheap, <laughs> but it's more likely going to be more toward like between ten and $12,000. And all in all, like, yeah, that's a huge expense. But the thing about a roof is as long as you get a good person to do it, they know what they're doing, they do a good job, that thing's going to last at least 20 to 30 years. In 20 years, I'm going to be... 46, 47 years old now. I just had a birthday recently, actually. I'll be 47 years old. At that time, I have a 20 year mortgage on this house, a fixed rate mortgage on this house. That thing's gonna be paid off. I plan to have it paid off before that, probably. My goal is to try to pay this thing off in the first 15, probably within 15 years. Because once again, 
obviously you have an interest rate. <clears throat> the longer you own the property, the longer you're paying for the property to the bank before you actually pay it fully off, you're paying interest. You're paying more money than you have to. So let's go outside. I'm gonna stop talking down here, but I'll continue talking outside. into the garage. Since I'm making this video, I might as well show you guys what I've been doing. It's got the garage. Get the light on. Open this guy up. So as you probably just could tell, <laughs> the garage door opener does not work. When I bought the house, it did not work. I personally did not see the point because it's my unit, my garage unit. So for me, it's literally just to keep random things, ladders, hoses, snowblower, more ladders. <laughs> just like random stuff, like things that I'm gonna have to do in the yard, cores, rakes, blah, 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 you know? And so this garage, like I said, it's my unit. I didn't see the point of fixing the garage because I personally, I'm 27 year old, 27 years old. I'm physically capable of opening and closing it when I need to, instead of, you know, paying to whatever the cost would be to actually fix the actual door opener. I didn't see the point. Mid down the road, I probably will. If I ever decide that I'm gonna sell the house, I absolutely will, because that's just gonna be more an incentive for the buyer to pay more, obviously, for it. Just a small thing, of course, but. So, we're in here. The garage is probably, we've, we've done a lot in the, like just this space alone. First off, I'm gonna start with this, just the door. As you can see, it's got a wooden frame around it. Me and my dad, we actually found this door in the, uh, the uh, excuse me, not the basement, the attic of the house when we first bought it. And we were like, there's nothing wrong with it. So what we did, we took it out of the garage. It was already on, no, actually we put it on hinges. We put the lock on there, slapped it on. Did a lot of like shaving around to actually make the door fit properly and so it would open and close properly. And all in all, fixed well, it's all good. The, one of my tenants uses the other garage space. So you can obviously do whatever, whatever he wants with it. For him, his garage door works. He has an opener for it. And obviously my goal is to keep my tenants as happy as possible. I think a lot of people don't realize that in this situation for rental property, like you're a business owner. You're a business owner and you have to think of yourself as the boss, so to speak. Your tenants are your employees. As a boss, your goal is to keep them as happy as possible, period. So any fixes, any money you're putting into the property, it's going toward your business. And I have yet to pocket a dime for this house and I don't plan to for a couple of years probably. Reason being, there's always gonna be fixes I need to make. For example, like, like I just spoke about in the basement, the, the uh, roof, which is gonna cost me once again, somewhere between eight and $12,000. I'm not taking that money out of my own pocket, <laughs> period. There's no point to. Great thing about this property is the tenants paying every single month to live where they're living. They cover the mortgage and then some. All the, and then some, <laughs> is going straight into the bank and it's gonna be going toward you know the roof, uh, you know, any landscaping that I feel like needs to be done, but once again, that's me doing the landscaping. <laughs> the lawn, you know, the snow, anything else. I don't see the point of paying somebody. It's just a waste of money in my, in my mind. So think of it like a business. Money in, money out. So next up, what I want to show you is this wall piece, actually. Right here, from floor to the ceiling. Top to bottom, it's nailed, it's screwed in, and behind it is this pipe, which is actually the sewage pipe, I believe, which runs from here 
straight up, which is, goes to the toilet. And right here, which is actually the gas line, is gonna be the next one. We're gonna put in a, probably a wooden door with a hinge on it because this is something that probably is gonna need access at some point and I don't really feel like ripping the entire wall out just to get to it. The whole reason this was not covered before was because based off of simply figuring out what happened prior, if you look at the wall right here, you can see there was clearly some like water damage or like water spilling down. My guess is from what we kind of figured out from above this board, which we actually replaced to top to bottom from here to the wall, to the corner, there's a pipe which clearly froze at some point. It broke and water went everywhere. And they probably didn't realize it or fix it probably for weeks on end, months on end, whatever it was. So all that, all this I should say right here was ripped out, it was gone, so we had to replace it. And it's definitely not done yet. We're, we're definitely gonna try to clean it up a bit right here. And other than that, over here, the most, probably one of the more recent things, including that, what we did was in this hallway, which leads up to the unit above the garage, is just this very simple molding, which we put from the floor all the way to the top, and down the other side, as you can see. We put it above the door. I'm still gonna try to clean this up because it just looks terrible. <laughs> looks kinda gross, it needs to be painted. I'm gonna try to paint it all white, most likely. And this door lately has been giving me problems. I try to close it and it's just very stubborn. There's definitely some just resistance around it. So I'm gonna have to maybe shape it down around the sides or do something with it. I haven't really figured that out yet, but there's always something that needs to be fixed. <laughs> And so I'll wrap it up there. I just thought it was kind of funny in a really unfortunate kind of way <laughs> with the uh, basement and what I told you about what was found in the, uh, connected to the chimney with a pipe that was connected to the chimney and just that lint, which still just blows my mind of how like, how could you half-ass something that much that you think, oh, we don't have a, you know any kind of product to put in there. So, oh look, water machine, <laughs> let's shove that shit in there. Why? Like, I just don't get it. Why waste your time and take the chance of a fire happening? And at that point, the entire thing burns to the ground. Like, that's just dangerous. All right, I'm done. So, once again, my name is Matthew Kaufman. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you found it entertaining for my misfortune, <laughs> or you just thought you might get a good laugh, well, there you go. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a like, consider subscribing. We'll talk soon. My name is Matthew Kaufman. Take care.